Okay. Okay. <laughs>
If you would like to be happy, let love be present in your heart. Now, this is something you can test and see if it is true quite easily. If you would like others to be happy, let love be in your heart. This also is something you can test quite easily. If you would like a life of contentment, let love be in your heart. If you would like a life of ease and enjoyment, let love be in your heart. If you would like to come to know spirit, let love be in your heart. If you would like to meet your creator, let love be in your heart. If you would like to know what you should do, let love be in your heart. If you would like to know your life purpose, let love be in your heart. These and more are based on letting love be in your heart. And love isn't something you create, it's something you allow, which is there with you now. And you pick it or you do not pick it. Maybe you pick another emotion instead. But all that you require will involve love being in the heart. And if you bring love in the heart together with the right understanding of the direction you must go, you will attain all things. And all things will belong to you for your use so that you may operate in the world in any way you wish, because the world will be operating within you. And we'll have two stories in a little while, which will emphasize this is the right way to do anything that must be done. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, they talk about what is the right way to do anything. And there is some rather good advice. The Gita says that one should do anything that must be done without the thought of any reward or any satisfaction that one may gain from the doing of what must be done. So a fool will act and say, I will do this in compensation or reckon, recompense for something to come into the future where one who is wise will do what must be done as an act of true love and devotion to what must occur. So it is the surrendering of any reward, any outcome, where one realizes that the love is the goal, not the action.
So love should come first and the action should be then secondary. And therefore the love is the reward and the action is the expression of the love. So let us say you want to be a healer in any way. You must first find the benefit of connection. The benefit is love is in the heart. And as you approach your patient, let love be in your heart. Sit with your patient and together you will meet in love. No word needs to be spoken. Both will know. If you wish to meet your guru, the guru is just a reflection of the truth to remind you that you are also that truth. There need not be a physical form, rather the reflection of the truth is beyond the physical form. So who is your guru then? If a guru exists as a reflection of what is true, then you can meet your guru in any situation, in any time. At times when your partner is grumpy, they too are your guru. At times when there is loneliness and you cannot find a path, or well, your guru is all around you. Maybe you look inwards. And you are one that searches with deep within your being for the truth. Or well, your guru just sits and waits for you to be ready. And shines their light into your dark mind. So that you may sit in the honesty and truth. And it is love in your heart that will call your true guru towards you. And when one finds that truth, one will know because the truth is awakened within another person. <clears throat> So the correct way to do anything is to see the other as your guru or your light. Bring love in your heart and let all doing be done out of this basis of love. Let your client, your patient, your friend, your teacher, your enemy be just that reflection of light to you. So in a moment, we will hear the healing list of names. As you hear the names, what if they all are your guru, your spirit, your creator?
would you welcome them with love in your heart? Or do, or do the names just glide past you without any consequence? So no matter if you are listening to the names being spoken or a recording of this session at some future time, meet each name with love in your heart. Not for the benefit of them, but for the expression of truth that you will find inside you. And then they will benefit after that. So honour the names with the expression of your true self. So, Brenda, may I have the healing list of names now, please? Stephanie and Susanna, Aiden, Abby, Rob, Susie, Ross, Karen, Amanda, Alex, Alice and Alex, Robert, Ross, Stacy, Lauren, Mistuki, Mark, Taylor and Suzette, Lisa Gunston, at Asha, Asha, sorry, Rosa, Coulter, Milada, Craig and Amanda, Jody, Christina, Liza, Katie, Chris and Howard Wielden, Mike Eskins, Evie Johnston, Rick, Jody, Tim, Harriet, and Daniel. Thank you. So in China, many years ago in a mythical age, there was a man called Alesco. Now Alesco had no possessions and the only thing he had was just an old worn out cloth that he wrapped around himself. And the king heard of such a man. And when looking for one to manage the finances of the kingdom, he wanted someone that had little or no self-interest. And therefore, therefore thought Alesco was the man that could manage the finances of the kingdom. So he sent for Alesco and his guards went forward to find the man and eventually found him playing with the turtles in a pond by the ocean. The soldiers walked to the man and said, your days of poverty are over. The king has requested you to manage the finances of the kingdom. And Alesco looked towards the guards and said, is it true that the king keeps a turtle wrapped in a, a gold cloth that he talks to each day? And the guard said, 
it is indeed true. Is that turtle alive or is the turtle dead? The guard sniggered but said, well, it is dead. And Aleska said, do you think one of these turtles would like the same fate to be wrapped in gold but dead? And the men said, well, the turtle will perhaps prefer to be alive. And Alaska said, no wealth will attract me. Why would I give up life for death? Even if it means that I will be rich beyond measure. No wealth will give me what I desire. You see, one gets caught in material world. Maybe the acquisition of wealth or seeing that wealth will make one happy. But the truth is, it will not make you happy. And as the acquisition of wealth will give you a temporary happiness. If that was true, then the loss of it will give you sadness at the end. So what do you think Alesco did? Did he reject the king to play with the turtles in the ocean? Or did he walk towards the king and undertake whatever role was offered? Out of a matter of duty, Alesco undertook the work. But not for the reward, but for the expression of duty to the kingdom. <clears throat> you see, the action was based in his expression of truth, not in acquiring anything. You see, if love is not created, just expressed, then it can be expressed through all of action. But if one sees that love is something to be created, then they feel they must do certain activities for the creation of love. So in Alesco's heart, love was present and the action could be performed. Not the other way around. So think of your working day, maybe the day you've had already. Were you working for an eventual love that may appear? As you're working for some future peace that may prevail. Some contentment where there is no effort required at some time in your future. Were you expecting your activity to create love, peace or contentment? The moral of the story is take the love now. Enjoy the peace now, the contentment now. And then let the action come out of that. 
If you find your contentment, then your effort towards your work is different. If you find your love first, then work is just the expression of love. If you can sit in peace, then no reward will ever be greater than the peace that you already have. Now you can test all of that immediately. Not take my word. Not think it's some glamorous script in a dusty book on a dusty shelf. But you can test it and see if it is true. If you take your peace now, all action can come from it, but will never give you a greater reward than you already have. If you accept your love now, then there is happiness within and without. If you have your contentment right now, then whatever prevails you, you can work with. There is no need to accept my words but just to allow the peace, the love, the contentment to be with you, even when your client is so obnoxious and your partner so miserable, or your work so difficult, or the desire for inspiration is just not coming. One day, a great king in a faraway country organized an exhibition. And a grand hall was filled full of all the products of the kingdom. And people could walk through the great hall and purchase anything they, requ they require. And there was a man that walked around the great hall, looking at every product in immense detail. And he'd walk from one product to the next product. And the shopkeepers would say, what do you want to buy? And the man would say, I will purchase anything that gives me satisfaction. And would wander on to the next product and the next. And day after day, the man would walk from one product to the next. Until he came to the very last day. And the last hour of the last day. And people would say, you need to hurry up. Because this will close soon. You need to buy the product. And the man answered the same way. I will only buy what gives me satisfaction. Approaching the last minute, the man walks up to the king and holds the king's hand and says, this hand gives me satisfaction. I would like to buy it. And the king looks at the man and the man says, in fact, I would like to buy you as well. And the king said, well, neither my hand nor myself are for sale.
And the man says, well, you have organized such a miraculous thing. It is only you that can give me satisfaction. And the king says, well, if you wish to buy me, then you must buy me with love. And the man began his love for the king. And loved his king with such a magnificent heart that the king loved the man back. And the king and the man become inseparable. And indeed, the man acquired the king. And the king acquired the man. And then the man possessed all the kingdom and all the goods that are within the kingdom. He possessed all things, never having to acquire anything, because they were already given to the man. To the physical world right in front of you now, full of all the trinkets that glitter, and shine to attract your attention. What you truly want, you already have. What you truly want is glistening within your heart right now. And you but need to have love within your heart. The external world will give you nothing. Until you find this truth of love and the knowledge that will take you in the right direction. So it is with love that you acquire the kingdom. But the product will never take you there. So what you lack, you already possess. Some future event is not required. You should first find your spiritual truth. Let your truth be within you and let it shine into the world. Let all action come from there. And then you are the guru. You are the one that takes people from darkness to light. from poverty to magnificence. You are that that you require. And you do not need to do anything. Rather, you just allow what is already there to flow into the world. And then it can be full peace that you obtain. It takes no time. You are ready for this right now. It is not a journey of 10 or 100 years or a thousand lifetimes. It is right now. You may awaken to the magnificence 
and see all things as an expression of the Lord. And you must just have love in your heart. Is this so hard? So whether you find the correct knowledge does not matter until there's love in the heart. But love in the heart will eventually merge with the true knowledge. And knowledge and love become one. As one becomes more loving and nearer to the truth of expression, then synchronicities in the life begin to Strange occurrences start to occur. One asks and one receives in an instant. In fact, something is given before the person even asks for it. So with a little guidance, one can find unconditional love. Not just love, but unconditional. As one moves from the no love in the body to the conditional love in the mind, to the unconditional love in spirit. Just a little guidance is required. Sometimes many reminders. But the path of the heart is true. I am not talking about the human limited heart. But the spiritual that is beyond the body. Let all hearts be in alignment. Let the flow of magnificence flow through you. Just allow. Within the human world, the humans create. And they create product and situations, which often are limited in nature. So even the grandest building is limited by times of decay and number of years. But what is unlimited is not created by the human world. It exists in abundance by yourself. And all you have to do is test my words. If you would like to be happy, let love be in your heart. If you would like others to be happy, let love be in your heart. If you would like to come to know spirit, let love be in your heart. So if you wish to 
achieved this mighty goal without effort right now. Well, you know what to do. Be warned. The limited mind will tell you it's not possible or it is for some other time or for some other person. Do not accept those words and see if what I am saying is true. Until next week, God bless you all. Hmm. Hmm.